There is a new scandal in BC that will unfold over the next decade. The new Royal BC Museum. At a whopping one billion, it is a costly and unnecessary replacement that will absorb scarce tax dollars as the BC people lurch from crisis to crisis. Let me explain. On the one hand, BC is booming economically and demographically. We are the fastest growing large province in Canada. We have never been richer, posting budget surpluses with record property tax revenues and booming tech, film, resource and tourism industries. On the other hand, BC is surrounded by unprecedented man-made crisis. A lot has been made about the family practice crisis in BC as a shortage is compounded by fears family doctors are retiring or moving out of BC. Family practice physicians are the foundation of our healthcare system, period. Each piece of paper represents a person dead from British Columbia's toxic drug crisis. By 2016, when the province declared a state of emergency, the death toll was 993. Last year, more than double that. We want homes. We haven't been able to get them in the system. So we have literally done what we can with what we have where we are. To many, this place is symptomatic of a broken housing market in BC. Always pricey, housing in BC has seen another spike. We've seen through the pandemic, uh, housing prices uh, skyrocket. Last year, Canadians faced a median wait time of just over 25 weeks between referral and receiving treatment. That's the longest wait time ever recorded by the Fraser Institute. I spoke to one of my doctors and I said to him, what do people do when they're in this kind of pain? They must be suicidal and depressed. And he said, absolutely both. Premier John Horgan says he's more concerned about inflation than he is about gas prices and won't be taking the Liberal suggestion. You can't solve that by just taking a penny or two here. You need to solve that by encouraging people to find other ways to move around. Falcon hearing this from drivers. Nobody can afford these prices. You know, like, uh, it's just drive you into the poorhouse. But right now, I encourage people to uh, think before you hop in the car. Do you need to make that trip? Is there a way you can do it with a neighbor or uh, someone who's going by? You heard that right. Premier Horgan just suggested if you can't afford the record gas prices, you should instead hitchhike when someone is driving by you. What's going on here? How can we have record wealth on the one hand and record crisis on the other? The answer may lie in an odd place, the Royal BC Museum. With all the emergencies in our province, you would think the provincial government is holding daily crisis meetings, working overtime and exhausting themselves until solutions are found. But no, actually, this is their focus. As of today, we are proud to announce that we are going to be building an $800 million safer, new, inclusive, accessible, modern museum for the people of British Columbia on this location going forward. I would, uh, uh, when, when we add the, uh, the $200 million collections, archive and collections building being built right now, uh, in the West Shore, that is over a billion dollars, and I would definitely characterize that as a mammoth announcement for the people of British Columbia. Yet an astounding 85% of BC people do not support this new museum because they are surrounded by endless crisis. So if Horgan's new museum is anti-democratic, wasteful, and harmful, how could he think this is the right decision? No one will ever know. But I think it is one of, or likely all of, these three things. The legacy incentive reveals a bias in ego-driven leaders where it appears rational to them to bolster their own long-term legacy instead of solving immediate problems of the people. Horgan worked his whole life in power and politics and what better way to leave his mark than a one billion dollar trophy planted literally next door to the parliament. Woke extractionism is when governments extract taxpayer dollars for worthy progressive causes while failing to meet the basic needs of those taxpayers. And finally, perhaps the NDP are simply incompetent. I voted BC NDP in every election for the last 21 years. 
I forgave their 50 million mistake known as the Fast Ferry scandal. But they sure can't expect us to forgive a $1 billion mistake. So how did the ferry program go from fast cat to white elephant? Three new ferries to be built, $200 million, hundreds of jobs, and the chance to sell to the world. That means a much more secure future for shipyard workers in British Columbia because of this announcement. But nothing went well. Engineers found a hairline crack in one Pacific Hat engine. Bathrooms didn't work, and raw sewage was being dumped into the sea. Then there was the wake problem. The high-speed ferry created a huge wake that smashed into the coastline, damaging boats and cottages. Now, eight years after announcing the program, the government is weighing anchor and leaving the fast ferry program altogether.